Welcome to the Super Soul Shaker Podcast. Drax. Get ready for the next podcast. So I'm here right now with Sylvie June. Um, Sylvia is her real name. Uh, how you doing, love? Hi, hello. Uh, I'm f- I'm doing fine, thank you. What about you? Yeah, yeah, doing good. It's uh, late late in the night, obviously for me, about ten o'clock. But I think for you, it's about it's, it's just it's like late morning. Yeah, it? it's yeah, it's late morning. <laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah. So I was just wondering if you could uh, tell us a bit about yourself, um, where you're from, and what your experiences uh, has been with uh, Tekken. Okay, I started to play Tekken. I mean, the first time I was 10 years, uh, I, had, uh, I was uh, I was 10, and I started playing with Tekken 3, with the demo, because uh, a good old friend of mine, of my childhood, just gave that to me as a present. And then um, I started to play Tekken 4, Tekken 5, and at that time it was 2005, so there were many, many games of the PlayStation 2 era, they were, they were so good, and so I, I had the chance to play the Tekken games uh, in a very few time, and, and learn about the game, like, um, pretty, pretty soon I can say. So, I remember, I started to be, I really liked the mechanics, the gameplay, the storyline, the characters, to the point that I, I just started to be so interested more on it, like on Tekken 4, playing with uh, Kazuya, playing with uh, Julia, Shaoyu, and I, I tried at first Jin, but... I didn't really like that they changed the fighting style, so I preferred to play Kazuya, I remember, at that time. Um, and then slowly, also trying all, all the characters from Tekken 5, I tried uh, Asuka, and so on. So, I started to be very committed to the game, like, really wanted to know more, to learn more, just to my own, because uh, I just get attached to it. And then, lately, um, just happened by chance to find on the internet on, on the Italian forums for Tekken that they were organizing some tournaments, especially a very big one in Rome. There was like, uh, I think it was named RTT2. There was also Tishumon there, the Japanese champion with uh, Raven. Yeah, yeah. And many players from uh, all Europe, even from Sweden, France. England, Spain, so many people that they were playing there um, not only for Tekken, Tekken 5 because I remember I was I was 14 so I was like the youngest over there and everybody was like from 20 to 30 years old and they were playing even Street Fighter no, Street Fighter 3, Guilty Gear, Soul Calibur 3, Virtua Fighter 5 <laughs> It was so incredible uh, seeing so many people over there just to play fighting games. I, I remember I couldn't really believe it that some people were taking it really, really seriously and loving the game just, just like I do. So for me, it was like one of the most beautiful experiences I had. And I had the chance to meet uh, wonderful people just like Bo, the Devil Kazuya and uh, other players that maybe they stopped playing, but I can still remember about them. Uh, but the Italian community has always been one of the biggest in Europe, so so many players and so much nice people. And it was like a wonderful experience. After that, I took part to other two tournaments for Tekken 5, Tekken 5 DR, uh, in the south of Italy. But after that, <laughs> Um, I like I like stopped because for some personal reasons, and 
but I like the idea of studying the game like in the technical uh, but still I wasn't really understanding very well the frame the frame data stuff even if the players were talking to me about that I really couldn't have the chance to play the game offline with somebody else so I find it pretty pointless yeah so for for a time I stopped it and later much later like at the end at the very end of Tekken 6 I started to play Tekken again a little bit uh, trying to, to be a little bit more serious, trying with the online, even if the experience was, I remember, it wasn't very good because there were so many pluggers and uh, people were sending rage mails, it was like a fashion back in the time. Yeah. Now it's like people stopped in Tekken 7, but uh, I remember the time it was, it was very stressing to play, uh, to play online, but it was like, for a start, it was good because it gave me the opportunity to learn the game playing with somebody else because it's the only way you can learn actually well the game. So have you, so have you participated in... Hello? 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 Hello. <laughs> Sorry there. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep, got you here. Um, I just... So, how many tournaments have you participated in over the years? Uh, well, more than 30, I think. I took part to many tournaments because when I started to play again uh, at the end of Tekken 6, uh, I started to do some, some tournaments every one or two months. So, yeah, I, I took part to many tournaments. I think I got some some nice experience, some good amount of experience, knowing all of the players from the community and um, hearing so much about the game and confronting their opinions and uh, the experience it helped a lot to level up and to understand better about the game. So from, te from Tekken Tag 2 I started to do more tournaments, um, like even Milano. Milano, Rome, south of Italy, uh, and then later on, uh, I called at, at, at the end of the Kentucky 2, I think, I started to participate also in France, tournaments in France, uh, since I was staying there for work. And so I could have the chance also to know players from outside the country that. Uh, uh, gave me the, um, the opportunity to to understand more, to know more people and to gain more experience. I think it's a, it was a unique opportunity because not everybody can, uh, can have this. So I feel like I'm pretty lucky about this. Yeah. And especially being, so, yeah. I mean, being a girl in this community mm -hmm. as, as well, what was your, what was your first tournament like? Oh, as a girl, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's a good question. Because, like, when you're a girl, nobody is really take you that much uh, in consideration as the same level of the other players. It's just like you're a random girl that just eat the place and is there. But actually, then uh, some players watching me, at me playing, they realize that I played the game enough to understand many things or to know some stuff that uh, maybe um, another, another player won't really, won't really do. So the more I was participating to tournaments, going there and, and learning stuff, they were more like accepting me more in the community. But the beginning was a little bit weird, honestly. There were some players that, for example, that some players that lost to me in the pool or lost to me on some free plays in front of other people and they were like 10, 10 years older than me they couldn't accept it like it was a, a hit on their on their soul <laughs> like a, it's something that should never happen that was funny but at the same time a little bit more sad because it's like uh, come on why I can't win the game like um, uh, this thing like should never happen. Yeah. Why? I mean, you have to 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 take it like that. It's a little bit uh, disappointing. But 
I tried to take it on the funny parts later. Uh, it needed some time because some of them, they were so, so angry about that that they tried to discourage me. And it happened more than one time. But I'm a pretty stubborn person, so they really did their fine luck in this, trying to do this. So. Are you really a stubborn yeah. person? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am because it happened like uh, some players were like, oh, so are you still playing? Are you still trying to play? Or like, oh, so you're still playing this character? Or. Uh, I mean, doing those observations that are pretty pointless doesn't make any sense. But it was, yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, so I like playing the game. What's the problem with you? Like, is it just because I'm a girl I can't like the game? Or you think I'm doing it just because of. Random stupid reasons, just because I want to be at the center of attention. No, I just I always loved playing the game since I was a since I was a kid. So, what's the problem of that? And I don't have problems, honestly, to feel like in competition with other with other men, because I know the biggest part of the community is just men. So, yeah, maybe it, it can be discouraging. At the same time, like it was fun because. Um, it's a different point of view that you see on this thing. You feel like it's pretty unique. And like, I always like to be in competitions, also in sports with, with the boys, just for, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I've always been like that. I found it that funny or uh, like challenging to me. Because sometimes, the, uh, some since you are a kid and you're a girl, they're like, oh, but you're a girl, you can't be good at this. And it's like challenging because you're like, but why? What's the problem with that? I can try it. I can I can be good as well if I want. So I got more and more stubborn about this, and I just continued. And seeing some boys upset, just losing because of this, it was like on a part it was satisfying because it's like I proved to myself that if I want, I can still stand up uh, towards those people that think that I, I can just do it. On the first place, with a sexist uh, for a sexist reason, that's all. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, uh, it happened. I uh, very well. It happened. It happened. It continued to happen even after. Or I remember when I was in France, some players that didn't know me, and they were like, "Okay, but who is this girl from Italy?" Or really, uh, <laughs> they were like, "Okay, so let's play. Let's clap. Let's crush her." That's what they were thinking. Then they were like, "They lose." They're like, no, mate, it's not possible. <laughs> they, so they were like, so if at first it was a first to two, then it was a first to three, then it was a first to five, first to ten. They're like, okay, mate, <laughs> maybe it's not my day. <laughs> it's going to take a while for them to understand that actually it's because I learned something on my own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I, that's a funny part. I definitely don't, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, make an excuse, but it is, it is very masculine if you get beaten by a girl with skill, let alone on stream if it's someone that you've never met um, it can be quite crushing because there's I feel like there's a lot of pressure if it's a dude you know being watched by his mates and you know like let's say he runs into someone like you and you crush him um, but then it's the same thing he shouldn't automatically think that he's owed a win because you're a girl yeah I mean I can understand that uh, from the other side it's a little bit confusing because you're like okay I'm playing with a girl maybe I'm gonna go slow. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna eat her too much. I'm gonna, you know. Uh, but I don't know. Then at the same time, you like, hey, but hey, I don't want to lose either. <laughs> so you can see that if they don't know the situation, they're like, okay, so well, how should I act? But even some other players just told me that, like, oh my god, it happened more than one time that some players. Before starting to play with me, they just sit next to me. I can feel their sound like they don't feel comfortable. They're like, okay, but and then they tell me, I, it's the first time I, I play with a girl. It's, it's a little bit weird, and then and they like they make they really make me feel like, um, oh, you know, it's like it shouldn't be or, uh, um, it's weird. Like for them, it's weird. But so on on a, on a side it's funny. On the other side, I I can really feel that they don't feel good at the place. <laughs> so have you had someone yeah. in a tournament or casual play say quietly to you, "Oh, actually, 
just so you know, I'll go easy on you in the first round. To me? Yeah. Yeah, I think it happened. Time ago, but I think it happened. Um, oh, yeah, but I don't remember when exactly it was. Like, like, and they were like, okay, I'm just gonna make you see you understand the game. And then, <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, so you know a few things. Oh, you know the combos. And then they're like surprised that you was just doing the combo. <laughs> it was pretty stupid. I was like, oh yeah, you look, you dumb of what? Why do you have to make me feel like inferior on this time? <laughs> What's the problem with that? Yeah, I mean. What makes it worse is if it's a mirror match. <laughs> You know, they're using your character, and you show them what your ca what the character can do, and they're like, "Oh, fuck!" Ah, uh, yeah. On the mirror match, it's like everybody takes it on on the ego side. Like they proud of the card. They're like, "Okay, I am the best with this card. I have to prove I am the best." With especially, especially in Italy, I saw this this thing like a mirror match. But I think everywhere it's like that. It's like, okay, I play Jin, so I have to be the best with Jin. I don't accept another player to be better than me. So, then you play in the mirror match. And they're like, oh, wait, I can't... It's even more crushing to them, because if it's with the mirror match, yeah, they... It's like crushing two times the, their ego. Yeah. But it's not only because, uh, in this case, about the, a difference of the of the gender it's not even about that it's generally people really really takes those things very seriously the mirror match well if it's a girl well i can understand maybe they look upset but they don't say anything because it will even make them look worse but yes. i can see on their face that they they like they feel like uncomfortable <laughs> yeah yeah so um what the Ticket World Tour events that you've been to, you've been to, well, you've mentioned certain places, you know, Paris, Barcelona, and Amsterdam. Mm. Is there any places that you want to tick off your list for this year? Yeah, I would like to go uh, to Greece eventually. It is in September. I still didn't sign up, but um, I really would like to go at least to Greece because I've never been in the first place. But uh, it seems like a good tournament. It's not a master. I think it's a challenger tournament. Um, then later, I think... Uh, don't, don't remember what, what uh, other events are. Maybe in Germany. I've never been to Germany. I never really even got too much connection like with the German community. So maybe one time I should go. I don't know when. I think in October there's uh, the Dama Germany. The, the, there were two, there were two tournaments, BTC and Dama Gem. So I didn't look too much like because I did some activities the first season. Now in this season, uh, yeah, after Amsterdam, I, I didn't want to other activities, but I, I would like to join some others uh, later because I always enjoy seeing all the players from all around the world join there. It's always, it's always beautiful. So, and since it's official events, everybody's there and it's like people are taking it very seriously despite the, the big difficulty of the system because it's only a first to two and you just have, uh, basically it's like one chance because if you go in the loser bracket then it's very hard to try to climb up. Yeah. So everybody just wants to win and stay in the winner side because later it's gonna be too much complicated so it's like you have one chance. Everybody likes it. Maybe it's like it's more adrenaline as well, or it's like okay, in the first two, there's some random factors as well because maybe there's some players that are very good, uh, very good fundamentals. So maybe they better play on the first two three, but there's other players that instead are way more aggressive and just like to to play lock lockdown in a lockdown way aggressive. So they're better in a first to two. Personally, first to two, I would still prefer because maybe the set is going to be too long. And anyway, understanding the player, you for understanding the player, you still need a first to three. It's better. But first to two, it's more like, okay, let's see if this also can work or let's see what he knows. And there's some random factor. 
but it can be it can be a bit more fun because you don't know the outcome. At the same time, I can understand that for most professional players, it, it can be a bit of a problem because they can lose to a player that doesn't have much experience. Yeah, they can lose uh, to an un- they can lose to an unknown, definitely. Uh, yeah, it, it, it happens pretty often. It happens pretty often, and now I can see that maybe the people understand understand the system. So they're like, okay, well, you know, it's like a 50-50, so don't get too mad, because in this game it's more easy to lose to a person that doesn't have the same amount of experience of, of yours, because uh, the, the game system changed, so there's more 50-50 situation instead of just building all the gameplay or the exchanges between a player and, and another. So there's sometimes it's like there's less poking, less punishing, and more like, let's guess well. So, this thing gave more chances to new players also to think that they can still have a chance. Makes more people trying to get in those, into those tournaments. That there, So there's a good side and a bad side. And I can understand the struggle, but at the same time, if, to me, in my opinion, first to three would be too long as well. Because from 10 minutes, 5 Maybe 5 to 10, it can be 15 to 20 minutes, so it's gonna take too long. So I can understand why the choose of this rule. Especially if there's so many players around, like 250 and plus. So yeah, it's yeah. pretty challenging. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. it's a lot of people that you need to, to get through, you know, sign them off, get them through their sets. You yourself, do you prefer to have short sets or long sets? Me personally, I prefer short sets. So I I can see that uh, I play better on a first to two than a first to three. I feel too pressure sometimes because then it's too much time focusing, and I can lose my focus. And so it can happen. I'm doing so well, and then just at the end, I'm messing up something because the set is taking too much time. Uh, I'm more used to to the first to two because. I the the first part of every tournament usually, especially the traditional type of one that we do in Italy, it's like pools. So the, the pools you have to fight from five to ten people. So it's for Celia four to two. After he changed to first to three, but in the past been like that. Now it's changing even those traditional tournaments because to be more like. Um, like tech and work tools so a person can get used to the system to be like a real tournament player so just let's do the best at first to two and then we will see because it's like first to three doesn't exist anymore unless, unless it's not an official tournament so yeah all right um just so when you stream like say for an hour or so um how do you tr- how do you treat that as practice? You know, do you try to like say to yourself, "Oh, you know, uh, you know, an hour, two hour streaming is that a long set practice for you?" Um, okay, the po- the point is this: streaming is pretty fun, can be pretty fun, but can be also a bit stressful, and maybe you don't have much. You don't have, you don't, have, you don't really have much time to study the game because during a stream. You try more to entertain, because if I'm gonna be on a practice mode, people are gonna be bored. I mean, I can try, I can do that. Some streamers aren't doing it. But I think you can't really do that for too long, because people are just gonna gonna too bored, be bored. So mm, I don't really feel like I'm learning, especially because in during a streaming phase, uh, you play ranked, so it, it can be already three bars. If it's already three bars and then you're also streaming, you're gonna feel an extra lag. Also also from the PC. Even if it's a little lag, it can can uh, inflict the um, the final result so you can feel like the it's not going la- like it should be offline. So you gotta get used more to an online play style instead of an off- offline one. So you, it's like you're learning another game. It's not like real Tekken. It's like 2D Tekken because especially 
on an online match you're gonna play more by dimensional instead instead of are you sure play it like offline doing more movement more sidestep uh, more ducking because most of the time if you lose it's because you can't crouch on the string so <laughs> if you don't crouch on the string and then the like still in positive they continue to press and even if you try to block you can't really block especially if it's a low but i think most players just knows it already it's not really a big news but this uh during a streaming you have to take it in consideration i mean maybe there's some players that are gonna try to snipe you so they're like okay she's streaming okay i'm gonna go right match i'm gonna crush her maybe they're gonna they're gonna do it and they're gonna be happy the problem is that mate I can't crouch on the string. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. So, okay. Let's go meet offline. Let's go see if we're gonna do the same result. But to me, still didn't happen that much. So it's fine. I mean, uh, no, not a big problem. Especially in season two now, it's like everybody feels like super tech and god, whatever. Just because everybody's claim is climbing so much in the rank system. Yeah, everyone's like, a god. Okay, mate, yeah. Everyone is taking God. I mean, it, it's, it's like in the country now. You're not taking God. You truly shit, mate. You can't be. You know, they're not taking God. <laughs> oh, come on, mate. It, now it's the country. Now it's the country. I mean, if in season, if season one, I was like, hey, I am a Gambo now. Oh, that's cool. Gambo in season one? That's cool. F with more characters. Nice, nice. It was satisfying, you know? Because it's like, you know, I remember you had to win yeah, 10 get, get, or 12 yeah. matches in a row. In a row, I remember. I remember I had to do it, or otherwise you're just gonna lose the streak and you're gonna lose the rhythm. And you just you're gonna still be stuck at overload. But most of the time, especially on, on PS4, the match was on three bars. And what what who do you met? Warang. And you're like, okay, okay, let's just be lucky because this. I don't know why that character online is so good. Just high low high low high low and you can't really crouch so like okay the, just let's wait just back that let's punish him or launch him because you can't really do much but so characters offline online are just so much better than uh, than uh, offline and you're like okay whatever i'm just gonna try to take it with philosophy because you can't really do much and then uh, yeah and season two i mean People, they like, oh, you Emperor, wow, that's good. No, mate, it's like a season one uh, vanquisher now, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Everyone, everyone's got a pocket so... Tekken Emperor, man. <laughs> I mean, Tekken Emperor. Or Tekken... Uh, what, or what? Tekken every, everyone's got a pocket Tekken Emperor, Tekken God, uh, yeah. Ry Ryujin, and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, some people are still doing screenshots and posting them on the socials. You can do that one time, but now it's much more easier to reach those ranks with uh, no problem. Also, I can see that the best players already reached Tekken God Prime in the very first month. So all the rest of the players are just mid players. So even if you play, if you play later, some months later, for do a, a Tekken God promo, you're gonna do that with like, a season one vanquisher guy. I mean, with all the respect, but you can see there's so much difference, especially the more time is passing, the more like, okay, I'm Tekken God Prime, but let's see on the leaderboard how many Tekken God Primes are there. And then you're like, you see 200, uh, but you know, in season one, you wouldn't even see one. Maybe just one Eternal Ruler, if you're lucky, and it's Tishumon, because I still remember it. <laughs> if it was season one, it would be. Just Tishmon, maybe Sersambo, because the Italian guy is always playing online, both them, and, and then that's all. I mean, really few people, so, but okay, I mean, now, at, at least, now everybody's happy, everybody's doing more content for their socials, everybody's gonna be like, mate, I'm taking God, okay, cool, let's post it on the socials, so everybody's happy, and... That, uh, okay. that is a fair point, mate. though. You're right. More, publi more, more, publi more publicity to the game. That's what Namco thinks, maybe, now. Yeah, no, that's smart, though, sure, because, yeah. yeah, people just putting up um, screenshots of their ranks and, you know, what what characters they've achieved with that rank. Have you... But, but just a question. Have you ever run into a Tekken streamer while you've been streaming? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Not, not much. Maybe... Um, a f like a famous one, or maybe a famous player. Yeah, famous player. Um, or someone that you've known of. Uh, maybe a famous. 
maybe a famous player. It happened uh, more, more recently. It was the Volkazuya with a different nickname, but I, I know it was him. Maybe the viewers didn't know. Uh, it's him with another nickname because if everybody are gonna see that it's him, they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be sending messages or being too much uh, clingy. So, yeah, it was the Volkazuya, uh, Rock Kang. Um, no, everybody's asking if I meet the main man. No, I never met the main man, honestly. <laughs> uh, King J. Uh, <laughs> oh, King, King J, just by chance. Everybody knows him because he does so much good content, so much stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I don't remember if I already said this, but, yeah, it was pretty disappointing on a side because I remember I met him, I was with Lucky Chloe. It was the beginning of season two. I was a fusion, and it was it was like a raging. Was this with Gigas? I, I, no, we played Armor King. We oh, played okay. Armor King. So we played like for full forty minutes, full forty minutes. I was going a little bit crazy, but uh, uh, honestly, when you play with Chloe, that's basically the mind game or the the gameplay you have to to adapt with her because this character is full aggro we can say she's aggressive game style uh, she doesn't have much defense style defense stuff so that's how you, you should play it. but he didn't like it at all he felt like i was doing a top post to troll him or stuff like that but actually it's my game style it's how i play and how i try to be annoying with the character because the character is made to be annoying so you have to play it like that Many people just got mad at me, but I, <laughs> I didn't really appreciate it in the first place of uh, seeing after. So when the stream, his stream was off, that he, he talked shit about all my matches. I wasn't on live, he was on live. Re and really? He, he, did he really do that? Yeah. But the, yeah, he did that, but <laughs> the sad thing is that he actually knows me. And he was aware he was me. And he said that, oh yes, I know actually who Savajun is, but I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> oh. so, okay, okay. I really, I, I also meet him in a tournament more than one time. We would say, hello, how are you? Smile and everything. And then you meet me online and say, I'm saying, oh, it's her. So let's see how she plays. And like, and but no, I mean, he said some things that he could avoid. Like, uh, I mean, a friend also made, uh, I mean, there's a, a video compilation that we made about that. There's some clips, but it was so fun because the way he got mad at, at my games. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun. I mean, nothing, nothing bad between me and him, actually. It's just that at that time, I got a little bit disappointed. Then we solved it and we talked private to oh, Oh, that's good. Yeah, that yeah. was my experience. Oh, yeah. come on, King J, come on, man. <laughs> now, I mean, but then again, you know, it, I mean, that's quite civil compared to other incidents, uh, you know, that have happened in the in the FGC. Mm hmm. The, the well, that it's pretty common. You said. Oh, I'm just saying it's it's not it's that sounds more civil compared to you know how how other you know like. Could have got you know like there are way worse uh, uh, FGC moments. <laughs> uh, but uh, okay, okay, I can understand that uh, the game is like making people way way more angry when they play online because I can understand the the game just proves too much your stress and your nerves. So I can understand, especially if it's lagging a little bit. But it's always like that. But I mean. Uh, it happened to meet some other players, but oh, I remember. For example, I met Friesen. Friesen is actually a very good Polish player. Yes. He's like considered the best, one of the best team in Europe. He was playing with Devil Jim, and we played. Uh, it, it was I was winning more games, I remember, but then at the end he win some more. I mean, two, three, and then since we already played much, we stopped. But he didn't say bad things about me, he didn't... I mean, maybe I was laughing on some things, but it's okay, it's fun. There's no problem, I meet some other players. But they didn't act like that, like he did, so I was like, but what? 
babae. <laughs> I didn't deserve it. You even know me, so what the, what's the point? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it it gets really um, ner- it gets really nerve wracking though when you're playing online and you see the name of your opponent and it's got a Twitch link and you automatically think, oh, okay, I need to put on a show because this is probably, you know, there's the chance that it could be streamed. Do you ever get that feeling when you run into certain players? Like, I, like I have to play, I have to, I when, mean, when like, you, when, I know, I meet a player that I know is streaming. Yeah. Uh, uh uh, yeah, it happened with him because I know I was pretty sure he was streaming. So, <laughs> but sometimes maybe maybe he wasn't. But uh, yeah, I'm like okay, maybe now everybody's gonna see, so better play good or play my own game. But most of the time, the best thing to do is just just don't think, just play, just play like you always do because you start to think, oh, they watching me, so I have to watch out. No, it's making your gameplay affect. So you have to play your style the way the way you usually play. Because if in that moment you're gonna be too much worrying about this, then you're gonna lose uh, your read so and your focus. So I try to to um, to learn to um, to adapt myself with this kind of mentality. Because if you're gonna if it's gonna affect you too much, you're not gonna play your own game. This, um, this happened to me when I was in Amsterdam, for example, because I played in the winner's side with Trungi. Everybody knew who was. Uh, only me at that moment I didn't really mind because I was like, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to win this because I know there's a guy from America, but I didn't really know him precisely yeah. who he was. I didn't know it was the big, I didn't know it was the geese, the best geese of America, honestly. Um, so I just... I don't know him what he was thinking at that moment. Maybe it was like I don't know. I don't know who is this person. Who is girl? Okay, so I I won, and everybody was looking at me. Didn't really believe it. They're like, Silva, but you know, who is this guy?" I'm like, uh, "Not much, not really." <laughs> but I thought it was on streaming. It wasn't. So the um, the staff of Tekken the Tekken World Tour didn't really be clear with me. But later. Later, when I had to fight him again in the loser side, I was in front of everybody, everybody of the theater, people from the theater, oh. from the streaming. They were like, wasn't people watching, and I felt so rigid and so stressed. I felt the tension. I, it's like I didn't play. If I watch back me back playing that match, it's like I wasn't playing. I, it wasn't me. I, I, di- I didn't do anything. I didn't really react. I was always insecure of my choice because I was too much thinking about the fact that everybody was looking at me. And that's a bit sad because I could play differently. Um, so I, it, it's about experience and learning. And it's a bit sad because it was my chance to still be in the tournament because I really reached top 32 in. Like a mondial, and mondial was so it was pretty much important, and I could still be there. But I was just one little step to top 16 because uh, I lost the match before with another another player at the very last, very last pixel. So I was already a bit like, uh, damn, it was so close. And then after every two play, I geese the geese players. So I'm like, oh mate, <laughs> I mean I. Yeah, that moment you need so much patience, so much patience, and try to be calm and relaxed. And it's not easy. I mean, uh, I'm co- also I'm a kind of emotional person, so I still have, st- I still struggle at this point. Uh, I hope I will learn to, because I learned already, and do some experience about that. So to trying to be more relaxed in a tournament match. Uh, but it's only it's only doing more about doing more tournaments that is gonna make you used to and not think about it anymore. That's how it works. So what's been the biggest stage you've played on at a tournament? Uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Describe because, how, because de- it was big. Describe how yeah. it was for you the build up to it. Like, you know, I know you you know you said you're working on it and stuff, but obviously that experience 
you know you clearly remember. Just tell us about that particular tournament for you. I mean, you mean in general or that one? Because it happened to play more than one time on a stage. Um, but or, or, that one was the biggest stage. Okay, well, yeah, just tell us about being on that stage, you know. On a stage, or just everybody looking at you. Yeah. Because, yeah. And, well, it happened more than one time. Now, uh, doesn't really came up, came, comes up to my mind, but... Yeah, I mean, I remember when I had to sit in front, in front of everybody, a big theater, like, I think there were 1,000 people sit over there looking at you, looking at you, and then also the match on the streaming, so I have to sit. The other player is uh, on the other side, so I couldn't even look at him or feel like what he's feeling in the same moment, because, you know, when you're playing with a person next to you, you can still actually feel how he's feeling at that moment, and that's... You can play on it, you know? It's like... Um, you can understand his feelings uh, and uh, what what he's thinking, or even if he's pressing, because you can hear him pressing. And that makes the difference as well. So not for all video game storm and this happens, but for Tekken, especially in the first phase of the pools, you play next to each other. Uh, in that moment, the player was also on the other side. So it feel like pretty cold environment in, the mo in that moment. It's like, ah, oh, damn, everybody's looking at you. The player's on the other side. It's just, ah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but for another place, maybe it's okay, it's fine. It's, but I'm still not used to, so. Uh. <laughs> so you, so you kind of, you do like being beside the player and feeling, you know, reading the psychology of the of the game that's happening outside the game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's a big difference here when a player is next to you. Uh, it feels like more confidence, like feels a little bit more friendly as well. But there's cons and pros about that. So there's some cons because he, he can as well uh, get into your psychology or looking your body language and see if you're pressing or not. I mean, I, I remember some players were doing this even during a match. I don't do those things, how you can, you have to be focused on the game. But I remember in the past there were some players like checking if they were pressing in that moment with the side track of the high. Button, button, <laughs> button sniping, yeah. Side <laughs> snapping was so crazy. I remember there was a player taking tag two doing those things. <laughs> yeah, very, very pro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you know, being a player from Europe, are you? You're Italian, are you? You're French, like? No, I'm Italian. It but some people mistaken me for French, maybe because on the looks and just because I have been French. Yeah. No, I'm I sorry. Funny. I I did that the first time. I thought you were French. Ah, oh, no, it's okay, it's okay, I can uh, I can understand. From the south of Italy also, people are more supposed to be a little, just a little bit more tan. But no, I'm not, I'm white. So even when I go to the shops, some people during the summer are even saying to me, good morning, instead of buongiorno. And I have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what oh do you, so since you're, since you're Italian, what do you think of Claudio as a character, as an Italian character in the Tekken roster? Claudio, yeah, well, that's a good question. Because Does he represent your people? He looks pretty people? cool. But, uh, I mean, they wanted to represent him like he's uh, proud, he's full of himself, um, handsome, uh, stylish, elegant. Yeah, I mean, I can understand the concept, because the Italian outside the continent, they see him like a Latin lover. Like very elegant Latin lover, but maybe it's a little bit <laughs> fantasy. It's too much fantasy. They really idealize the Italian person, like like an anime character. It looks like more an anime character to me. Yeah. There's many many memes also about that. That is more like it looks like he's being inspired too much from Bleach. A bleach dude, uh, or there's a bit of Jojo, or even the same pose of Goenix from King of Fighters. Uh, you can see that they get inspired from 
still Japanese culture stuff. So it's like a, a very idealized fantasy idea of an Italian person. Maybe, for example, Miguel as the Spanish character. Maybe it fits more, fits more the um, the the ideal of the Spanish person. Yeah, it's more close to be. But Claudio, to me, still looks like more like a Sul Calibur of Final Fantasy characters. And even to other Italian players, they think that. The problem is that at the same time, I can understand the difficulty of creating an Italian character because even from past seconds, Arada was sending emails to the Italian community to try to give him some ideas to make these Italian characters because they had this uh, idea for this project from a long time ago already but they never had an idea. So instead of giving good ideas to Arada, some Italians were like, oh, just make a pizza man or just make a, ma a mafia guy. But no, it would be so sad. It doesn't really represent the country. It's just stereotypes yeah, about it's, old it's, movies. Yeah, it's too obvious. Uh, mm, it's, I, you don't want to be represented by something like that as well because it's just based on some old culture or from some movies. It's, it's not really about that. So they, I can understand they had much difficulty of creating a character, an Italian character. But people seem to like that anyway, because still it's flashy, it's, uh, it's pretty much fantasy. It's still, Tekken is still a very, very, there's so much uh, variety in, in the game, the characters, so there's some that maybe can be more realistic, others a bit less. So you're gonna still deal with it. I think I think it's still a cool character. The thing that didn't make me play because everybody in the Terra community were like, okay, so let's play Claudio because he's an Italian character. But then everybody noticed that he's pretty boring because he, he doesn't have so much variety on the moves. So uh, he, he's just based on the op kick. The, this the same of Rugal from King of Fighters. Anyway. The almighty hop kick in season one, which would reach, yeah, like, fuck, I mean, I was, yeah, I was running into the hop kick all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, well, it's too good. He's, uh, he has the best hop kick, best range. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I don't feel like to play a character, basically, it's only two moves. Mm, I don't know, it's still it's still boring to me, even if they simplified the game on purpose, because you see Kazumi, uh, she plays with two free moves, but everybody looking at the character, looking at the moves, looks pretty boring. Even if she's pretty cool as a character on her own, the moves are so boring. That's a problem. Because so people are gonna play her just because she's basic, she's strong, but... Not really because they're enjoying that much the gameplay. Same for Claudio, I think. Yeah, I guess that's a bit of the competitive side as well. You know, like if you are playing someone that's quite general to use, you can probably pick up four or five other characters that can play in a, in a similar sense. Yeah, but now the problem is that everybody's just playing Geese, Kazumi, and... Jack, even not not in Europe that much anymore. Yeah, I don't feel like people uh, are know running into Jack, Jack much. Mm. Uh, Jack always been the main the main peak in America. In Europe, not much because we like variety, we like creative and variety stuff. But it is undeniable the most uh, one of the most strongest characters in the game because it's so good, it's so good. Um, I. On my own, I have difficulties to fight him. It's very hard because he's just standing, doing DB1, 2, DB1, FF1, and then the troll game that he's extremely good. You have to guess every time, guess well. It's true that he can sidestep, but he has a long range, so I don't know, he's, he's just too good. At the wall, he's, <laughs> he's ridiculous. He's really just ridiculous. So I really hope, I always hope to never meet a Jack play in a tournament. It's just as disturbing as playing Geese, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, before, yes, everybody was playing Jack more. more. Now, not much, because you just play all the characters that are as well are much stronger and maybe a little bit more fun. Yeah. Because it's boring, everybody says that. Yeah, Ford Ford 1, uh, 2... 
down back one. Yeah, it's just it's just you're right. You know, you can cut it down to five moves, maybe a bit more, and that that's it. That's how you can play the character. It's not exciting. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's not like you've. It's not that that good looking character like Fang, for example. Same thing. I mean, for example, Fang is pretty fun to play. I think because he has so much stuff to play, but. The cat is uh, on the appearance is a bit ugly. <laughs> a bit ug a bit ugly. Uh, uh, ugly. <laughs> the sprite is a bit ugly to me, but the gameplay looks so fun. Yeah. So um. From, that was being on that. Could you give me the names of some of the, like, who are some of the best players in the Europe scene right now? Your own opinion. Oh well, um, it seems uh, lately the UK community seems the strongest because in the first place I was being Italy, then for a period it was France because mostly of Super Akuma, I guess, and then lately, lately it seems more UK. So I can say Fergus, well, everybody knows Fergus, so he's in the tops of the leaderboard. Um, yeah, well, Super Akuma. In Italy, there's Daniel Mado that is like being like two months in Japan, yeah. <laughs> lost <laughs> in Asia somewhere, thanks to his sponsor. Well, we're happy for him at least. He's doing so much experience and doing F4 to uh, the 100 times around. And with Jin. And then Bode, always being one of my favorite players as well. So, um, who else? Who else? Uh, there's so many good players actually, it's very hard to do this list. The, all these players that are always doing good in tournaments from UK, there's Azim, Ken and Trench. Uh, there was a, a time Doug from Paris as well. That we beat at Speed Kicks, I still remember from TVT Amsterdam, that was a very good performance. Um, then all the players that we have so much variety anyway, so many players that are playing different characters. For example, I, I appreciate, for example, Kalak that he plays Lily. Everybody thinks Lily is a very weak character, but he knows, he just, like, it's like he invented a good gameplay to make her work in a tournament, especially in uh, shorter sets. Like, it's just gonna wait to do the right, right time the up kick. Yeah. That's good because I remember that since many years they, in America, say, post saying like, uh, some comments on the social saying Lily is trash. But no, you can make it work. She's good as well. Just that you have to adapt uh, a good gameplay. And it's good that in Europe there's actually players like that. They know how to make work cartons that seem slow tire, but but it's just about being a little bit more creative sometimes. And, th and that's good. That's what I like about Europe. There's so much. It's a real jungle. <laughs> you go to <laughs> Europe, you you never know what's the biggest the biggest number of characters you're, go you're gonna. Uh, what's the main character you're gonna meet? Because if you go in America, you know, there's mostly Jack players. In Europe, you're never gonna know. It's a jungle. <laughs> it's a rich pool of um, skill and knowledge. Like, it just seems like there's a lot of people that you can pull experiences from. Yeah, especially in Italy. There's so many players playing from 20 years. Like, they are almost 40. So they have, like, huge experience. Huge experience can teach so much to the community, especially in Italy, from the south, there's some players that they have, they play competitively from Tekken, Tekken 1 or Tekken 4, it's so much time, they can teach you so much, since we kind of open people, sociable, we don't have big, big much problems about sharing text, uh, knowledge and stuff, so that, that is, um, a uh, good point, a very, a very strong point that makes the community so strong, in my opinion. That's not something I see often in other, in other countries. Uh, well, maybe uh, the situation is changing. Yeah, uh, do you mean, um, like, the lack of, like, true bond within the community? Like, sh like just sharing knowledge and information? Yes. Mm, it's about also this, being like enough bonded to care about each other, sharing texts and make caring about helping the community to grow their level. So the general level, 
it's already very high here. So everybody starts. So like you go to a tournament, you can really lose to everybody. This is really mid-high level. Generally, that is is very good because, for example, I remember in France, it's like there's top players or medium players. There's not much of a, um, not many players that are on the middle because the community is fragmented. So this can affect the final results of uh, the level of uh, strength of, of a full community. So yeah. Has there been s- what well, has there been someone that's helped you grow the most as a player? Yeah, um, people from um, yeah, definitely from the south. Players that uh, the first one that picked me up, I can see it was Bode. Then later uh, there were players from uh, from Sicily, and then. Um, then also from my region, um, and then also some French players. Okay. The one, the, the last, it's like my last teacher who was really teaching me or explaining me stuff. It was Bambino from Marseille. It was teaching me good, good Tekken. And it really, really helped me to, to train a lot for Tekken 7 specifically. So, yeah, it was a uh, good training. I'm really grateful to them because they make me grow so much you can't really um in a fighting game you can grow up as a player there's no help from the community so be- offline <laughs> because online you're gonna learn another type of game as we already know i do know that for some people yeah. that um the fgc it's not like they don't commit too much into it it's just something that they dip into every now and then but it seems like you know this community is really like a second family to you yeah to me it is because i know them from so many years so i'm happy that i'm i feel bonded to most of them but it's like we live so far so you don't we don't really see each other that much so I don't really bonded too much with the players from the north, but for obvious reasons, because they live too far, so just meet them in the tournaments. But with the rest of the players, it's uh, it's quite okay. I forgot to actually. Um, Hello? Yep, I forgot to. Sorry, I forgot to mention as well. Um, you you were talking about you know um, one of your one of your homeboys getting sponsored. Um, you're you're you've got a you're you're a part of a team as well. It's co- it's Nine Tails, isn't it? Yeah, um, okay, in the first place I've been sponsored by Dragons Gaming for the Season 1. Then it became Level 1 Gaming, actually it's a big building of esports and gaming bar from uh, Milano. And then later been, I can say, hired from Ninetales, so this is uh, an esports team that uh, it's my it's in my region, so I know the manager, for example, from many years uh, before. So ju- it just was accidental that he said, "Oh, you know, I'm I creating start to to creating an organization about gaming. And I would like to grow. So if you would like to join, see, I will be happy." So I just I just uh, agreed. So. Yeah, at the moment, um, this is, it's like since I can't really stream, I it's like the project stopped for a moment. But we should we should continue to to make it grow. Lately, when I will have my PC back. Oh, is it your yeah. oh your PC is damaged? Is it? I, it's not that it's damaged. Uh, there's a piece that I want to change. There's the motherboard that I have to change, so I'm still waiting the assistance to give it back a new piece. And it's take like ages. I don't know why. So at the moment I can't really stream. It's pretty sad. But okay, I hope I'm gonna solve it pretty soon. Um, is so, yeah. is is your sponsor quite strict about you streaming? I do know that certain sponsors, you know, esports companies that is a condition you know like oh you need to stream regularly Are they- yeah they give me some conditions even about the social networks uh, the point is that at this point um, I-, I can't really do I can't really make content so they have to deal with it and they know it so yeah that's the point but yeah there's some rules 
are like in every in every team sports. Yeah. They they want you to yeah. The socials now are important because it makes you grow and know more people, makes the community more connected. So it it helps pretty much the the tech and community to grow, share information, and so being active also on the social seems like an important thing too from uh, an esports team. Yep, you have your streaming, you have, you know, obviously your Twitter account, your Instagram. Um, you're quite active on mm -hmm. Instagram, I know, with your photos of yourself, you know, all dolled up, and you also run the Tick and Emperor Facebook page. You're the admin, right? Mm, well. <laughs> It was like that. Um, actually, the page is of uh, a Peruvian player that lived in Italy for many years, so I was his close friend. And then what happened that uh, he asked me to help him with some content. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna be like a second admin. I'm gonna post some stuff. So there was like some years ago, I was always posting. Now, uh, I mean, after some time, I said, you know, it takes so much time and taking care, so I don't have, I can't really, it's really too much to me, too much work. And also, it's hard with Tekken to always find new content to post. So, um, you arrive at a point that it's like point black, you don't really know, it's hard, it's hard. Unless you don't make some videos, some stream stuff, it's hard to make new content as well. So I was like, listen, I have to do, to take my priority in life, and so I can't really, I can't really deal with it now with the page. So now it's him to deal with it from more than one year. Well, before I was, I was helping. It's not like it's me, but I was always helping if there was something about to uh, create uh, some memes or some posts, uh, some uh, contents. Yeah, contests, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I've been pretty active. Yeah. No, I was just one. I was just wondering, um, you know, in terms of the professionalism, like how serious you took it, because yeah, it's like I know other pages and stuff. You know, like it's it's just all drowned in in memes. I think Fighting GM. I saw a tweet he just put out or something where it was like, oh, I miss Tekken Zaibatsu so much. You know, it was such a wealth of knowledge now. You know, it's all Discord chats of meme pictures and dry jokes and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's kind of, that's that's our culture now. Yeah, but that's how we internet now works. We can say because everybody, when it's internet, they just want to have a laugh. So the memes are part of the thing. And Tekken Zebatsu was a good resource, but it's like forums now are not in the fashion anymore. It's just more. Um, it's it's just more comfortable using Twitter, honestly. Or any of the instant messaging apps. Yeah, definitely the free messaging apps. Mm, it's just that uh, things changed. Now the forums, now they're not very active anymore. You don't really use the forums. They losing losing uh, uh, users. It's, there's no point because now people are all in the socials. And you must be on the socials because it's more easy. Also, the, you can be contact from easily from other players or uh, team teams. So, what's the point of posting on forums anymore? Uh, because I was I was very active in the forums, but before, but now there's no point. There's nobody. Everybody's on uh, is on Twitter. So basically, if you are an esport player you are on Twitter, you post so much stuff. You connect with other players, and also you can activate some notifies. So you can. So when Namco publish something, Twitter is gonna be the first socials that they're gonna post post it. So it's just better to stay there. So it's easier to gain information. So you just stay there and uh, yeah, it's just better. It's just better. You can post videos, comments, and there's no spam because one of the biggest problems of Facebook, for example, everybody's spamming. You just don't wanna deal with it. Yeah, well, there, yeah. you're right. There's a lot of spam. Um, but there's a lot of trolls as well. Have you yourself had to deal with many trolls? Oof, trolls. Mm, no, not more trolls, but people they like, they want to copy you or. Uh, it happened like there was a page named the Tekken Girl Bolivia. They just wanted to were copying my content, so I got mad at them. And then came up. 
they, they were a bunch of girls that were copying my stuff. So I was like, what's the problem? And then I made a post about it because I didn't like it. There was somebody that just post my uh, matches and even some rank matches, like the, the the rank screenshots, things like that. They were exactly the same. They were mine. Yeah. It's like, hey, girl. I mean, girl. I mean, they weren't even speaking English. It's people from from Latin America, so we're speaking Spanish. Oh wow! So well, I was like. Uh, yeah, it was pretty hard. I was like, what the, what the hell? Why are you doing this? Can you please stop? And then I made a post about it, about it, but it triggered some Spanish people. I mean, whatever. Bolivian people. They got so mad, I started to get uh, aimed by well, those accounts speaking to me in Spanish. I was like, hey mate, Italian is not Spanish. How many times do you have to tell you? They are two different languages. And I don't want to deal with it, just delete the post and don't annoy me, don't piss me off. Just delete the stuff, it's because it's mine. I mean, everybody now on the socials is copying content, so it's pretty common. But when I just randomly find out, it pisses me off. So, yeah, I have to deal with this because they just, um, oh, I don't know, I don't know what is it, but... Do you, uh, think, it, do you think it's something that... You know, tick, like the tick, you know, like tick and the. Do you feel like Bandai Namco have to put certain uh, things in place? Because you're right, like content copying and stream um, boosting. Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like when people like hijack the, the stream or they, you know, like I don't want to mention certain people channels, but you know, those that crop a, a tournament and they'll put it up before the actual. Official channel. Ah, you did the, the yeah. famous Big Daddy, Big Daddy Jandy. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know who you're talking about. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I personally don't take issue with it. I mean, like, if you were, I mean, if you were just a casual watcher, you know, you just want to watch a tournament, you just want to see it like as soon as possible. I think at first glance, you don't really care about who the publisher was, but then when you look back at it. It's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, true, you know, Bandai Nam- you know, they do, you know, the Tekken World Tour, Tekken itself, you know, the company Bandai Nam- they don't even get credited or nothing, and all the views just go to that, that back, sh- that back. Yeah, set. it's a big issue mm. because even me, for example, it is a content creator other than just a, than a player, and he's publishing some stuff. He's trying to earn money with that. I can understand. He's a professional player, probably one of the best. If he wasn't the best, he's still one of the best in the world, so... You can just copy his content and publish that on another page. And then stealing his money, because then YouTube... You try to gain some money from YouTube if you are that big as an influencer. Uh, so, yeah, this piece, piece of people, very much. Um, especially now, those channels, like I said, Big Daddy Gen, the, the, Thing, something like that that is just uh, copying I mean there's a tournament on Twitch he immediately uploads them on YouTube so people just look for a match it's just more easy you go on YouTube you check it and it's already uploaded so you just watch it there's so many views you just give free views to this guy that, may, that he doesn't do anything he just crops the videos and he uploads them it's pretty sad because also you're stealing money from the Namco, the Namco ones because it, the problem is that Nam- Namco doesn't do it, but they should. They should find somebody that with the YouTube page they upload all the the videos immediately as soon as possible because otherwise those random guys they're gonna just do it before you. Yep, exactly. And they should so be. You're gonna lose. Yep, they should yeah. be streaming it, and at the same time, they should be uploading the, that tournament in segments. Yeah, making it more yeah. concrete. I mean, I know, you know, these people are really they're, they're literally on the wire, uploading it as soon as possible. But I mean, it, I mean, if anything, they've just highlighted a weakness. I mean, streaming, yeah, but in terms of like cataloging it and storing it on YouTube and just promoting it that way as well, focusing there a bit more. Yeah. Mm-mm, yeah, no, it's, I don't. Ju- I just don't find it fair. It's not fair to anybody. Also, Cadlecore, I saw a post. She got pretty mad. It's like, just stop to use my face, my name to make views. That's not fair. She's right. 
that's not fair because that's money that should go to some somebody else, not to a random guy. Just what he's doing is just it's just an internet connection. So if I want to, I, I can do it on my own. But that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that that is a, yeah, and that, and that is a fair point that casual people may not get. You know, because you're right. It's just you know this person is cropping a video, but it's using someone's name their face and even though they're on stream and you know i'm sure they've consented they're all right with it it's just the fact that you know their name is helping them earn some money in their pocket he's probably not earning that much but it's just it's enough to for people yeah. to be disturbed by it you know yeah it's not like he's a millionaire or something but still it's disturbing you shouldn't do that because uh, still you're still robbing basically so do you feel like? Yeah, do you feel? Things, uh, Namco should do something. I don't know what, but they have to do something. It's not fair. Hey, maybe they could place uh, something at and do something at Evo or something. You know, because obviously that's going to be the biggest, uh, biggest thing to to stream snipe. What about Evo? Oh no, I'm just. Oh, what about Evo? Sorry. No, no, I just mean like um, you know, if you're going to stream snipe, you know. Do it, doing it on a big event like Evo, you know, he'll definitely be pulling a lot of views mm -hmm. then. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can, even me, I could, I could do it, but no, I mean, they will, they, he will still do it if they don't stop him. It's not, this is not gonna stop. So, I mean, Amco should do something. I don't know really. <laughs> I don't know if he can solve this. I hope they will. Just using people's names, and that's not fair. Hmm. So, uh, you know, is is there uh, with with the characters in Tekken, who do you think is the best, and who do you think is the worst? Oh, as a, um, as a competitive level, or like as an appearance uh, thing? Uh, tier list wise. You mean Hmm. So I will well I will say the two D scatters because they just don't just, just don't deal with the real game, they just play their own game. So for them it's basically I'm playing my game, you play your own game. But I have an advantage on it because I play one system, you play another system. And even if there's some difficulties manually, still it's an advantage because uh uh, it's something just two di two different gameplays clashing each other. Didn't even Namco I think knew what they was they were doing. It's like a test, like a beta stuff for uh, an eventual Tekken X Street Fighter. But uh, yeah, basically I will say the two D characters, especially Geese. Then Akuma, you need some execution. So okay. Uh, then Kazumi, Jack. Um, wow, well, I, I checked the the roster because now it doesn't come up to my mind. Oh, but you know, you've got Steve Fox, Brain. Jean, uh, Jean, Alisa, Alisa's very strong. Yeah. Very, very strong. In Europe, there aren't many Alisa players, so there's some, there's still some ignorance about that. But actually, she's very, in my opinion, she's cheap. At that level, she's very good. Um, who else? So, but even this game, even the pandas can be a big problem, I think. Um, who else? What about Paul? Well, Devil Jin is always good, for example. Paul, oh yeah, Paul. Paul, Steve, uh, Raven. Also I can say Yoshi, but he's, he's hard. But yeah, Yoshi is really good. He has all the stuff to be laid out. Uh, Lau, oh Lau. SS Tire as well. Very strong, Lau. Very strong, because the 3 plus 4 for a punish. 14 frame, yeah, so good. The launcher 14 as well. Frames. Mm -hmm. That is too good. Warang in Season 2 also gained much, because now he's... Uh, we're doing down 3-4, makes him stay more close to you, so he can do more gains, more pressure. It's very annoying. Very strong characters as well. 
Katarina, I think it will be the best deal for a new player as well, or in general for a tournament. Everybody says that she's very easy. It's true, she's very easy manually. Uh, some players told me anyway that now in season 2 with the new move that they added FF24 actually to maximize uh, the juggle or the punishes with these moves it's a little bit hard so it makes the character just a little bit more hard uh, I think it's pretty fair because the character basically is, <laughs> she's pretty cheap she's just the master of opkick, the opkick with F44 because it crashes everything long legs, long, long range, high damage very strong, uh, very strong Oki. She's basically very, very good. So Katarina and Kazuya is very, very strong now. He's very. St I don't know why people are complaining, saying that he's trash. Or, okay, it's true. You need some execution. I also in Steel Fighter, you need some. So, but that doesn't mean the character is not playable in the tournament. It's just more hard because you need more focus. So you're gonna, you're gonna use them for a few sets, but not for a full tournament. This is gonna, it's gonna tire. It's gonna weigh you tire down. Too much yeah. Better. Yeah, too too hard to keep the focus with this card. But basically, now he has DB2 safe, ff 4 safe. Uh, he has F3. I mean, he has all the stuff he needs for be very very strong. So yeah, I mean, somebody was whining that he's uh, is too hard, but now he has the safe moves to play in a match, so nothing to complain about. <laughs> Kazumi. Uh, Lei Wulong is pretty tricky. I mean, he's considered low tire, but can you consider? I mean, he has five rage drives. What are we talking about? I mean, he can really, he can really mess you up your mind. He has so much variety, so much stuff he can do. So, for example, in Italy we have a very strong player named Frog. He's one of the top players at the moment. He means he means Lei Wulong, and he's so strong. He's unpredictable. By rage drives, this is crazy, man. Really. <laughs> yeah, I have no. Uh, Marduk. Yeah. As well. I, I, what? No, no, just yeah, you're right. It's like five rage drives from the stances, and I have no idea what those stances have. <laughs> Even Namco doesn't know that, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Just give that to me, to him. Yeah, just let's give him five rage drives and let's stop. Uh, we don't know. I mean. Uh, if I'm gonna go inside the Namco, the Namco uh, agency, you're gonna like, hey, hello, but do you know what this guy is doing? Oh, uh, mate, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky, it's very strong. Mm, Anna, I don't think is that good. Anna, I don't think is that good. Chloe is good, uh, it's good at uh, just in short sets. And, well, if you're not jounding, it's gonna be hard to keep keep doing good in a tournament uh, f for much. Even him, he doesn't main her as a first character, he mains Eddie and then there's like, it's like a sidekick. So, but she can be tricky as well. Yeah. Uh, Lars, not that much impressive. Eddie now is, is still very good, but now it's more like, finally, a normal character. Uh, Lee, Lee is hard, but he's very good as well. He is good now in Season 2. I go online, everybody's smashing like crazy the buttons. They're all monkeys, they're not players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, it's, it's good. Um, well, so I, already, I, already, I think I already said them. Yeah, Armor yeah. King is very good as well, but it's not like the, he's Tekken Tag 2 version, but he's still very solid character. So, yeah, basically this, I'm gonna say. And the character that you're using in Tekken 7 right now, so that's Asuka. What, what do you think about her? Uh, yeah, Asuka. I mean Asuka because she's the most complicated in my opinion. She doesn't have to play too much with too many moves, so you, I'm not gonna get confused easily, <laughs> at least. She's very solid because now she has very high damage. Uh, and... Uh, she, I think she has everything, the only thing she still misses is the 10 frame punish, it's really weak, it's just pressing 1, and her job is the slowest to recover, so it's... You have to watch out doing just 1, because sometimes I do 1, it whiffs, and I'm still gonna get it, so I need to watch out about that. The, but as regards the rest, the character is pretty good overall. Back 3, so step 2 then now is safe. Um, now the Okizeme is so good, the F3, the soccer kick is so good. 
um, one plus two, then two, yeah. I mean, she's always the same anyway. She didn't change too much. But now she's uh, she's more solid than before. Also, as this safe counter they added for uh, FF3, you minus nine, but the counter now gives a full uh, full combo damage. Full combo, like, yeah. Uh, full, doesn't really make any sense to me giving another safe mid to her. I will prefer Namco to add something more. Like yeah, but some better punishes ten frames. But I think they do just don't do, they just to do it on purpose. The cat will be too strong. Maybe so the standards geese. So I still don't understand. But okay. Yeah, I'll never understand. <laughs> I'll never understand geese. I feel like people were really excited about you know these two D characters, Akuma and Geese, and now we're just like, well, I mean. I mean, any time I see a geese in a tournament, I'm just like, get out of here, man. Like, can you just leave? It's full 50-50. I mean, I, for example, last time I did a lobby with the best geese in Italy. Um, you, I could see that after 10 matches, 20, he was exactly like 10-10. I was like, okay, dude, you know what? This is full 50 50. So it's like I can win, but I can also lose. You're never gonna be sure that you're gonna win against these. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's so. just, it's just, it's just weird. Like it's just, I just can't understand how, you know, a character can do a move and you know it's unblock and you know it's like unsafe on block, but then he can cancel it through his is gorge it's just like oh my god you can't nothing's guaranteed with this guy man honestly <laughs> i still remember uh the uh, the finals of a tournament that they held in naples in january there was this guy just doing anti the grand finals just doing back free two i don't know what to do mate just be free two <laughs> and then he's half of the screen safe two it's it confirmable after you have full combo damage, what do you want more? I don't know. <laughs> don't fear, you just actually don't fear anything. Now it's true that they nerf it a little bit, you can sidestep it or you can press between, I think, because now it has uh, worse recovery. But still, but still, yeah, yeah. the move is still there. It's. It, I think it's, yeah, I think the mm. knee, the knee is minus 13 by itself, I think, and if you, if the first, if the knee whiffs, I think you can s sidestep the, the palm, but I mean, I still, I'm still struggling with that move. Uh, yeah, just like three, four characters, I think, just three, four characters, they can sidestep the palm. I think Alisa, Lily, and, and I think even Chloe. There was another cat and now I don't remember. Oh, Warang, if you can press F3, you can go to the stance and just avoid the palm. I mean, little tricks like that. That can make you avoid the hit, but not all the characters can do that. So, yeah, um, it's still pretty tricky. I even if even if it can punish the first hit, it stops. Whatever, it's, I mean, it's not pretty much of a problem because you can still do it again. Um, uh, it's more like a nerf. For for the for Korean players, for because the difference is just slight. You can still play his own game. It doesn't really change that much. So yeah, the, but still, I mean, I I still see in tournaments the, the character pretty often. What did really change? It's like they just tickle him with this uh, nerf, as we can call it. Yeah, I'm not really calling it a nerf. Uh, hope... Yeah, me, me neither, me neither. So we will see. We will see if it's gonna it's gonna be season three or uh, they're gonna change something more. I, I really hope there's gonna be or or another update because season two actually it's more unbalanced than season one. That's for sure. Why 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 do you say unbalanced? Uh, yeah, I know. I just noticed that by many little things all together, it's this big picture, and they they touched they touched some characters, they did some nerves and uh, and buffs, but to some characters more than others, with no reason. 
um, some others nerf too much, others buff too much, still doesn't make any sense. Now, I don't know, re really, I think it's more unbalanced. Because now it's like all characters have the spammable stuff. So... And uh, still there's some, so many glitches, especially at the wall with the ragers, they still didn't fix it, I don't know why. Or uh, some moves just disappear, they just don't eat you. It seems like it's fires. It's playing on the background. This song when sometimes you do a mid and the mid just got crashed by way for Katarina. Yeah. I mean, now uh, mm, it's just more unbalanced, I think. But uh, even Nee said that. So hmm. there's so much to say about that. Well, what would you expect from hmm. season three? I wouldn't say new characters because there is already so many. But just another arrangement for the balance and uh, also the wall splat thing bouncing on the wall. That's, that's, I don't know, that's too much as well. Too much? Uh, too much? Well, I, I don't know why they did that. It's like uh, now you can get it by one hit if a, a person can maximize it with all the combos. I don't know if it's a good idea actually. Um, they just added this like they didn't know what to add. Um, so what they can do? Uh, I don't know. And honestly, I don't know precisely what they can do. Maybe they can just get better than online. Because now everybody, people playing online. Adding some features for the practice mode, make it more easier to check stuff. I wish one day they put a frame data, but I think they will never do it. There's either a live or Virtua Fighter that they are in the game. But no, we have two likes, like some idiots I have to check. That can cheek an application on my app store. <laughs> uh, yeah, RB well. Norway and stuff. Well, when, when, I mean, when did Tekken, when did the Tekken um, frame bot thing went down? Because I... Yeah, like, I mean, because there was that as well. That was such a good system. What? Um, the, t one? the Tekken, um, you know, on PC where, um, like, you had the Tekken frame bot or whatever. Tekken bot. Yeah, Tekken bot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's not always precise, I noticed. Sometimes it's not saying the right thing, but uh, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's actually better than just checking the Tekken Chicken application. Mm, it's more comfortable like that, but you have to play on PC. On PS4, you're not gonna. Yeah, you need. You, you basically don't have. Yeah, you need taking chicken. Yeah, taking seven chicken if you're gonna do PS4. Mm, yeah, so you're gonna do taking chicken, or if you're on PC, taking both. Basically this. So yeah, mm. so I hope they're gonna they're gonna add this one day. But it's just for competitive players that. To them, it's a, a fewer percentage of the players, so... But it will be pretty fair, it will be just more easier, because anyway people are gonna check, so... The point of hiding that. I just Some wanna... bug stuff. Yeah. I what? Sorry, sorry love, I just wanna go over, um... I just wanna talk a bit more about, like, are you playing other games... currently? I was playing Resident Evil, Devil May Cry... Uh, Monster Hunter, uh, some horror games that are less known, but uh, because of that, can I be more focusing on it? Now I took a break, but yeah, it's always like since Tekken came out, m came out, I always been more uh, focusing on it. So, just play more Tekken than a lot of games. But in the past, I used to play so many more games. Um, they will make cry also. It's a series that I really liked. What um what like I said. what got you into Devil May Cry? What? What got you into the that gaming series Devil May Cry? What make me get in the series? What what made you interested in that series? At first, I wasn't really interested in it. But then there was a friend of mine who was always talking about it. So I started to give it a chance. So I played the third and then I played all the other of them. What I really like is the fleshy gameplay, the fast gameplay, combo system, the goth, the gothic, the gothic enamel style that's interesting. 
uh, I like this uh, um, I'm also the architecture stuff I remember it was interesting to see the levels are how they are uh, implemented um, the structure of the game generally the storyline also is, uh, is interesting talking about the devils and the angels um, I mean I find it pretty entertaining if if I want if I'm nervous and I just want to release my nerve I'm just gonna play maybe Devil May Cry I'm gonna crush some demons I mean, make me feel better <laughs> With, is, is that part of the reason why you attached to June so easily because she kind of had that angelic aura about her yeah because there's like this uh, duality between the demons and the, the, and the angel that really got me into the storyline and I find it very interesting I liked that she is an angel but uh, at the same time she has this hidden identity she's like uh, the maniac part, so uh, it's like she she can be two people, and it seems like she's more of a deeper character that he, people can even get. I think she's more. She's a, a very interesting character. She's not that much popular like others, but I think she was an important key to the series as a character. She's different as well because it's not like typical fighter that is just showing the body but she's mysterious and um, and also graceful fighting style makes her so particular so unique yeah well like when she when Harada had that movement you know the bring back June you know if there's much interest he'll bring her back when he translated that and create reinvented her style what she looked like what were your first thoughts when you saw june in ticket tag 2 i was very happy actually to see june again and i liked that they keep the fact that uh, she's wearing black and white like reminding a bit the oriental uh, philosophy with the yin and yang um, so I like the new costume, for example, her new appearance. She changed also her face. She's she's different. She's not the same. She's more more mature as well. But I don't, for example, about that. I'm just saying, I didn't really like the shoes. This doesn't make any sense to me. So she has like it's covering the one toe, but not the other toes. And it's a weird. It's just a weird sandal. Yeah. I oh, would just a weird sandal because I made also the the cosplay, but it really was very hard just to understand how to do to make the shoes. I don't know. I mean, really, it didn't really make much sense. So I, the, I really like the costume, but not not that part. <laughs> Always been like an issue for her the shoe things. I don't know why. So, but the the style, the fighting style. Uh, seems pretty realistic. It's like a mix of Shao Yu and Lily, but it's pretty graceful to see, cool to see. I really like that. Mm, the only problem is that she, the earth, the stances were too slow, so everybody was guessing well. You didn't really add much game from there because it was also unsafe. Uh, indeed, just after in Tekken Revolution, they and buffed this thing so she was she was in the level better um, but yeah I mean generally visually I really liked how the how they came they changed the character problem is that ignorant people they're gonna say why could June if there's Asuka I can understand because they're a little bit of a clone but actually she's way more complicated than Asuka because she has the stances and she has the cancels so I needed much time honestly to understand better how to make them work instead of just being too obvious with some uh, some some stuff. So you needed time to understand. Actually, I invested much time on her and now she's not there anymore. So I'm a bit disappointed on her side. On the other side, I can understand it will be a problem to choose a main character because now I am playing Asuka. Sometimes I play, I may play, I may not Asuka, Chloe, I play also show you a little bit leading but uh, the thing is that if they're gonna add uh, June they're gonna put me in a crisis actually 
because <laughs> uh, I'm gonna play too many characters, knowing myself, or it means that I, I need to focus on fewer ones. Um, when I found out that I liked playing as Chloe, I was like, okay, you know what, this character is pretty fun. So for a moment, I'm gonna stick with her, and I like the cat lady thing. So, but uh, Juno is gonna be my favorite characters of the series. The, the series generally, so yeah, she's more deep. She's there's so much about her, uh, but yeah, it's like you're never gonna know it precisely. She's a she's a character that seems like to hide much. But you're never gonna know. <laughs> With her st and her and her story, because like she's only been present in what one like Tekken two and the non-canon tag two. Like, there's a lot of her story that can be fleshed out. Yeah, she just enjoys being in the um, in the, the the tag series, but not on the main story. Maybe she's a swag for this, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, she just been taken to. Mm, that's pretty. That's pretty disappointing and sad on our side because when I found out that, I found it pretty sad. On the other part, I find it pretty interesting. She has this story with Kazuya because Kazuya always be my um, favorite male character in the game. So I really like romanticizing about them, like as a couple, because I think it's the best couple in Tekken that could be. Everybody ships Jin and Shoyu, but I just didn't see them go together. So I just prefer this couple so much. And that's why I also liked uh, the June. Also, the June idea to implement that in my nickname. Yeah. yeah it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and actually, because you were talking about cosplaying June, you actually do a really good job. Um, like, because, you know, physic you know cause physically you do kind of, like, you can you can pull it off quite well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, he, I really, when I saw the character, uh, when I saw the character uh, in Tekken Tag 2, I was like, uh, it's my dream to just do a June cosplay. I don't aim to do many cosplays, it's not really my main interest. I find it fun. But I said, hey, you know what, I just want to do this cosplay because she's my favorite character of all time, so I'm just going to do it. I don't mind anything. Um, so I just, uh, I can't really sue on my own, but I could at least manage to do the graphic thing. So I did the drawings, I did the crows, I did the flower on her uh, scarf, and it was pretty fun, it was pretty fun actually. And I enjoyed going to the comic cons with the cosplay. So many people asked me the picture because they recognized the characters and, and I'm pretty happy about it. Like 50 people ask me the picture that day. <laughs> what move would you take yeah. from What move would you take from June and give it to Asuka in Tekken 7? Side so step 4. Cross <laughs> so 4 and block. That's good. That was so good. Um, yeah, side so step 4 and uh, well, the stances, you can't really give Asuka the stances, but what was sidestep four uh, again? Was it like a heel kick or something? Uh, she's uh, a heel kick. No, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like she's turning, turning. It's like a scorpion kick, similar to the Fang one. So it it's you makes you crouched. So it's with the kick. Middle kick, like, uh, like a spike. I don't know at the screen. <laughs> okay, okay. No, yeah, to... it's a good move anyway. Yeah. Okay, no, that's all good. Mm. Um, so, well, I would like to think that if there was a season three, I'm hoping that there is. Like, I noticed that the second season was about bringing like some of the older like not legacy characters but some of the the golden oldies so you had your you know Lei Wulong and Anna I'm hoping that with this season it's throwback to the to the characters like the one-offs so that's June that's Zafina that's Kunimitsu 
I'm probably、mm-hmm. going to be wrong, but I'm really hoping so because, yeah, like Safina, what a unique play style, Kunimitsu, Wang, Bake Dosan. Yeah,、uh, what are your thoughts? No, honestly, I want to add more characters. <laughs> but, yeah, I can see they're cool characters.、Uh, but what's sad is if they're going to add. Those characters, and then there's nobody playing them actually, or just two or three people. Then you're gonna lose in tournament because of those two or three people, or losing to Giga's player, I'm gonna be pretty mad. <laughs> but, I mean, Queen Mitch was really cool, but actually, what's the point? Just because she's a female, you don't play Yoshimitsu? I don't know. I mean, Zafina, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Zafina. The initial idea of the character would be cool, would have been cool, but、uh, they just didn't、uh, exploit it better. They didn't, they didn't, they missed something, because their fight is that it's too weird. It, the scarecrow thing and、uh, the spider thing, it's a little bit. Yeah, scarecrow, tarantula, and she had one other one as well, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean,、uh, I don't know. It would be better to add some finance, maybe. Bec- it's gonna be Tekken Tag 2 again if it's like that. I mean, I would be happy to see them, like, just to see them, but if I have to learn new characters that also no, very few people are gonna play them, I don't really see the point. I don't think it's about that gonna make the sales grow more, because the roster is already there. There are already so many characters. Um, so, some people were asking about Wong、uh, or about even Jim Pachi, but no, I don't, I don't think like, we really need them, honestly.、Um, I know on my side, I really like June, but、uh, if this means that you have to add more characters that are, people are not gonna play them, I really see it pointless. Because then also everybody gonna spend those extra money for a character that nobody plays. Or you're gonna play just two, one, two times and then it's, a, then it's done. It's gonna be a little bit sad, you know? That's what I think. Yeah. But,、mm, I, I don't know, maybe they're gonna add something different. Or they're just gonna reinvent the character. Oh, yeah, maybe they can do this. Maybe they can pick Zafina and change it completely, changing. Or maybe changing the things that doesn't convince people. The outfit, for sure, because they change it one and more time and I don't really find it much appealing. Or the fighting style.、Um, changing something that they have, they have to, to reinvent the character, just like they did with Julia.、Um, yeah, they have, to, they have to do this. Firstly, to do this is they want to add the, the character. That's what I think. Well, I mean, it's probably fair to say that if there is a season three, there could be another guest character. Who would you like to see as this supposed guest character?、Ah, I was sad to see that they added my favorite King of Fighter ca- character in、uh, Dead or Alive. They added、uh, Kula Diamond. Oh, yeah, they、But、did. Yeah. <laughs>、uh, I mean, she was my favorite. Uh, but they had it in the, in the wrong game. I will never actually play it or alive. I don't really like the system. I don't like the philosophy of the game in general.、Uh, but yeah, I, I really, if you add geese, I would like to see Kula. But I know they will not do it. I don't think they will.、Um, especially if it's already been added to another game. Maybe some people were saying another Final Fantasy character. Like, one is not, is not already too much. Nah,、This、one's enough. Like a Mugen. One,、uh, so, you see? <laughs>、yeah. And one is enough. We're gonna see the same, they're gonna say the same for, for King of Fighters. Don't want any more Uras.、Uh, yeah. Maybe somebody from another, another game. Um, um, yeah, maybe. Maybe Virgil or Dante. <laughs> maybe. Since, since there's this word. Maybe. But it's gonna be another sword character. 
Oh, that's a... God help us. That's a difficult this. question. No, I mean, I would be afraid, honestly. I would like... If they're gonna announce something from another game, uh, like, oh my gosh, what's gonna be now? Because we already have Negan with the bat. Mm, maybe another character with some other weapon. It can be, it can be. I don't know from which game, but because honestly, I don't, I didn't really inform myself on the new games coming up. So, but some people said Kazuma Kiryu, Kiryu from. Uh, oh, from Yakuza. Uh, from Yakuza, but. Um, yeah, yeah, it seemed interesting, but it's too similar to Kazuya, my own, uh, I think. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't think we're gonna do. I don't think we're gonna do it. No, it's it's hard. It's hard to say. Okay. Uh, if I won't say something, just because I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we'll be coming. We're coming to the end, so I'll just ask you a few more questions. Um, tell me about your best experience in the FGC. My what? Your best experience. My best experience. Yeah. Like something happened in a tournament. Yeah, just 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 something that you'll always remember. Something that's um gonna be a treasured memory for you. <sighs> There's so many. <laughs> uh, There's so many. Ah, uh, that's a hard question. Well, I, I could say the first torment I ever did, that's still one of the strongest memories that I'm gonna have. Something that I can't delete from my memory. Because it was the most powerful one, because uh, it really, really signed a uh, part of my life as well. Making, knowing the people. Then after so much going on, so much, so much things that happened. Um, maybe I will say tournaments abroad, maybe in Paris, in Marseille, I think I can say. Um, yeah, but it's not a question to ask you, I don't know how to answer this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's many. I didn't thought about it, honestly. That's okay. I, yeah, not many people do. Um, I mean, I could, I, I could do, I could do something a bit simpler, hopefully. Um, have you? What's the best advice you've been given by someone? Uh, do not care. I just play the game. <laughs> if you get worried for something about the game, just remember it's a game. Just enjoy it and play. Do your game. And the biggest advice. Well, it's something about to relax, to focus, to um oh I mean to try to keep calm, to not get nervous. Then anyway, still what's gonna change about your life? Um it's not like it's gonna affect your life, your lifetime, but you can have a good memory about it. So, but still, I think also Amsterdam was one of. Oh yeah, I was. A, I think I said that to myself some time ago. I think it was the best tournament. I have. I have. I mean, been the most beautiful Tekken event I have. I took part to because there were so many people. And I call me the uh, all the new. Wait a second. No, you are good. Yeah, I mean, in Amsterdam, I mean, it was uh, it was beautiful to meet all the players that I, I never met before. So that was good, and I will never, I will never forget that honestly, because also the city was beautiful, the theater was beautiful. Meeting again for another time, Murray. Ah, yeah, Murray. When he, when Murray talked to me, because for for telling me compliments about my performance in the tournament, and he, he even thanked me to be there. 
and took part to it and also to to say that I played well anyway uh, that he was happy to see me there because there's, there, isn't, there aren't many girls around actually it was good like when I was I remember when I was talking with Kadoko we were like the only girls that we were behind the the, the how can I say the stage so we were waiting our our moment to play uh, yeah, I mean, we have to play with all the other best players around in the world, so it was pretty cool. It was, it was everybody, it was everybody, I think. I think that's the the, be, the best experience. Yeah, I think now it came up to my mind. Oh, forget something like that. If you had to give your, if you had to give advice to a, to a female that wanted to get into this scene, uh, what would you say to them? Well, first of all, you need, if she has really the passion, because that's the main thing that is going to move you to all this effort. If that's something is going to upset her, to just don't care and going forward and do what you like and what you think is the best to do. Just don't care what other people say and just do what you like, play the game and don't care about haters of people that are gonna do the same jokes about like uh, that's not that's something it's not for you it's not uh, just do something else why are you doing this just don't care just play just play and uh, yeah to be to be stubborn <laughs> I guess uh, otherwise you will not make it in this case so much there's so much to see to study so much things to deal with it it's hard but if you really have the passion everything is gonna it's gonna come on its own i think yeah but i can understand it's hard <laughs> yeah to explain this i mean you mm. yeah well I, I mean you enter into the scene with with um a limited mindset of people looking on and uh yeah guys that have a lot of uh thirst in their messages as well. Mm -mm. Oh, excuse me, what? Oh, th you know, just what? like like when guys say, oh, hi, I see you play this video game in a message, and then the next mm -hmm. one saying, oh, you, yeah, uh, you look, well, oh, you look oh, cool. Well, oh, I'm how about say. you and You're me? really get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> You're really gonna get used to it. I just uh, don't care too much. <laughs> Oh, I mean, so many comments like, uh, oh well, uh, about your gameplay or why you're playing, uh, or, uh, uh, but no, but you don't play well, but why you do this, and then they lose losing anyway, for example, no? or they're gonna be like, oh, hello, you're a girl, can I play with you? <laughs> because, yeah, but, uh, well, oh uh, well. Uh, Oh, I didn't know you were a girl. Oh my god, I lost a girl. Or oh, I played with a girl. Oh my god. <laughs> However, you, I'm just gonna say, deal with it. You know what I'm gonna, gonna find your path. But I warned you, but just, uh, just gonna get used to it. Because, you know, it's not gonna be easy. But if, uh, if you're strong enough, you're gonna laugh on it. Otherwise, I don't know. But it happened to me some very weird situations. I, I, I sometimes I still ask to myself, I, how can I still be there? Yes, <laughs> so much going through. No, really, so many weird people around. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> is there um someone that you haven't? Fuck. Is there someone that you haven't met, but you want to? Oh. Already meet like maybe Daigo, but he's not taking player, so. Oh, well, um, that, that's still someone. They were, they were, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe Daigo or Tokido or uh, uh, who else? I mean, there were everybody over there. There was GDCR, there was me. Uh, oh, wait, Arslan, I guess. <laughs> he's new. This is new. Yeah. Uh, so. 
I even meet Kayana, she's like a very I a big icon for the female players in the community, fighting games community. The biggest one for sure. I even meet Ryan R. I I meet so many players, I even meet uh the yeah, even Yeah, maybe some players from America. I meet the biggest ones. But of course not all the community, so but I'm I'm pretty happy with it. So even them back, I met them back. I met John Ding, Chanel. Uh, I took pictures with them. Joy Fury, uh, Shadow Twenty Z, his brother Jonia. Um, so of course Arada and Mure meet them two times. So I'm fine with it. And yeah, I think not not many left. Not many left. Coma. Yeah, I feel so. I so many players. I had a very uh, beautiful chance in Amsterdam. Some of them I already met, but then I see really everybody over there. Jimmy J Tran. Hi, <laughs> Jimmy J Tran. I didn't take the pictures with him, but there's so many people. It was so difficult just looking around. Everybody moving, going to uh, all the parts of, of the place. So it was. It was difficult to talk with everybody, or uh, some of them were just in the, into the stage already. You can you couldn't really talk with them, but I, I think I'm a pretty done. <laughs> so, I mean, no, I mean, I did I already met many people already. Yeah, so that's good with it. That's a lot of names, man. That's a lot of big names. Yeah, exactly. I feel lucky. Hmm. I feel pretty lucky. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, the final question. Who is your fighting game waifu? Oh, waifu. Uh, well. But waifu, but waifu is something is a girl you want to marry. Right? Um, In this case, it would be my favorite. Yeah, yeah, it would be <laughs> the one that you, yeah, the one you take a bullet for. Well, June, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Oh, like... Oh, so Lucky Clue is waifu. <laughs> 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 Annoying, but funny. But so funny. Is it more like 70, yeah. 70 to 30 June? Or is it a lot higher? Uh, well, no. Uh, well, yeah, like... Like 70, 30, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just well let me uh, have the the moment to thank you Sylvie June for your time and just yeah for sharing your stories um, it's been wonderful listening to your accent as well um, is there anything that you'd like to say to your friends family uh, your fans I- anything you want to say I would like to thank everybody first to listening to the interview and to support me to follow me on the socials to just be friends or uh, Playing that much online, meeting in the tournaments every time, doing funny pictures, uh, have fun conversations. Uh, and yeah, I just want to thank you, everybody, really, because to me, like I said already in another interview for uh, the Italian TV, I said for me, it's like another family. It's like another family, for real. So I want to thank you as well, Drax, for this interview, this opportunity. Uh, there's there's going to be so many good things uh, hired of us no thank you again sylvie june no it's been a pleasure please follow sylvie june on her platforms and uh thanks again for listening and we'll catch you another time um bye yeah. bye bye <laughs>